Let's start with President Biden discussing Iran yesterday. Here's this clip from Joe Biden outside the White House. You hold respons them responsible in the sense that they're supplying the weapons to the people who did it. We'll, we'll have that discussion. I don't think we need a wider war in the Middle East. That's not what I'm looking for. Okay, so we also have a clip from the Pentagon responding to some similar questions. Let's roll A2 here. I wouldn't say that the conflict is spreading in that we've seen over 100 attacks on U.S. forces, unfortunately, over 100 attacks on U.S. forces in Iraq and Syria and, of course, now in Jordan. Um, we don't want to see a widening of this conflict. We don't see this conflict widening as it still remains contained to Gaza. But this attack was certainly escalatory in that it killed three service members, three of our U.S. service members. And um, as the president has said, uh, we don't see conflict. We don't want to see a, widen, widen, a widening of a regional war, um, but we will respond at a time and place of our choosing. It's not spreading when mm -hmm. troops literally have died in another country. Yeah. Well, again, but they've also been launching these attacks since October 17th. And again, we can't discount the fact that these attacks are incredibly dangerous put our service members at risk, but they have not, uh, up until yesterday, inflicted lethal harm. Um, they have been predominantly minor injuries and minor, in, uh, minor damage to infrastructure. It is interesting that we feel like we have to respond by escalating when typically this attack would have been intercepted. And like she said, it would have caused minor damage they, they, we would have knocked the drone out of the sky. Maybe it hits a fence and, and they have to fix a fence post. But because we screwed up mm -hmm. um, and our defenses presumed that this drone was actually a U.S. drone that had been out, you know, flying around Jordan and who, who knows where else, uh, that we let it get too close to the base. Yes. And when it got too close to the base, it killed three soldiers. So it's, it's very interesting that we feel like, yes, they did launch it, but it if we had intercepted it, like we had intercepted every other other one, we would not feel like we had to attack Iran. Yeah, it's a great point that our own incompetence, and I think this is what's so scary about being fanned out across the Middle East in ways that actually you and Ken Klippenstein and the, and the Intercept in general has been, uh, I think, dogged at tracking down and pushing these questions about our, who's in Yemen? What do you right. mean we're in Yemen? Uh, that's, I think, what's so dangerous yeah, about what, being And we're in Jordan. Uh, Beth yeah. Solar made a good point the other day. You know, you know where American troops are not dying? Afghanistan. Mm -hmm. And people have been saying for years now, leaving troops in Syria, leaving troops all, all spread out all over the Middle East is just giving targets yeah. to these militias. Say you make a mistake, like in this case, right. three service members die. And, and, now, right, than, and now we're required to go to war over it? Right, right. And so then you have the pressures, you have uh, all of that. And just because of our own incompetence and because we were fanned out across the Middle East in different ways. Uh, now, again, the, f the fault is with the people who are sending drones to us for killing the service members. That doesn't excuse the incompetence at all. And it doesn't excuse us having this strategy that makes us so vulnerable to getting into wars uh, because, like you said, Ryan, yeah. like these pressures can change in an instant. And meanwhile, as Crystal Sager talked about yesterday, the negotiations over some type of resolution to the hostage uh, crisis and the war itself can t continue, uh, each side rejecting offers and offers and counter offers. Meanwhile, we can put up this next element here. Uh, Hamas appears to be regrouping in, in northern Gaza uh, and it, a, a sign of a, a, a Israel retreat, uh, retreating and the war effort going quite poorly on the ground um, mm. for for the IDF. Now, if if you remember, uh, the State Department won a concession from Israel that U United Nations surveyors would be able to go into northern Gaza and just check out the situation and, and come back with a report on what it would take to get Palest the Palestinian population to be able to go back to their homes. Uh, Matt Miller at the State Department yesterday said that that, that is now on hold uh, because of so many um, Hamas militants resurfacing in this area. Uh, Israel is, is saying publicly that Hamas is even policing the area. Mm -hmm. And this, this comes at, after Israel said maybe a dozen different times that they had operational control of northern Gaza, which was in the face of so many analysts saying it's not possible. Like with just simply with the civilian population against you, with the, ton with the, the tunnels 
uh, remain, you know, remaining operational, yes. despite the fact that they're now flooding them again, the, the Israel's uh, flooding them with water again, uh, something like 80% of them are still functional. Uh, and the Israeli economy is buckling under the weight of all of this, because not only are, are they, have they now cut off their main source of low-wage labor, which is, you know, wet West Bank Palestinians and Gazan Palestinians that they're not allowing into the country anymore, but hundreds of thousands of their uh, other, uh, you know, Israeli workers have been called up and are fighting the war. So you've got entire companies that are just basically empty of, of workers. And you can't run an economy for, for long uh, under those conditions, especially when tourism, which is a major part of the, uh, the economy, is also spiraling. Your point about Hamas returning to northern Gaza is such an important one. This is quotes from that Guardian article that we just had up on the screen from Michael Milstein of the Institute for National Security Studies, which is basically a think tank that's in Israel. It's based in Tel Aviv. Uh, he said Hamas control these areas. So there's no chaos or vacuum because it is the workers of Gaza municipality or civil rescue defense forces who are effectively part of Hamas who are in forcing public order. Hamas still exists. Hamas has survived. The IDF version is that in the northern part of Gaza, the basic military structure of Hamas was broken. That only works with a conventional army, but not for a flexible guerrilla operation like Hamas. We are already seeing individuals as snipers setting booby traps and so on. So many casualties in northern Gaza over the last few months for that goal of eliminating mm -hmm. Hamas. Uh, a lot of people died in the interest of eliminating Hamas. This is, I mean, beyond tragic uh, to, to realize that, you know, again, we've been questioning whether that was a possibility when you have, as Michael Milstein puts it, a, quote, flexible guerrilla operation. Uh, and I think we're going to be seeing increasingly that the answer to that is what people suspected. It, it was not possible right. to wage that kind of war and, quote, eradicate Hamas. Right. I think, and Sagar has made, I think earlier in this war, Sagar was making some comparisons uh, to Vietnam mm -hmm. and the Viet Cong. And I think those are apt in the sense that, and, and you could also say it in comparison to the American Revolution. Like the idea that the British were going to come over here <laughs> or the U.S. were going to go over to Vietnam and we were, and they would just magically pluck out you know, Sam Adams and John Adams and go find, uh, you know, Thomas Paine and kill them and, you know, flatten Philadelphia. Granted, they didn't have drones. You know, they did not. They did not have drones. They had fire and torture <laughs> and they used it uh, pretty ruthlessly. But because the the guerrilla army of the American revolutionaries was part and parcel of the the kind of the patriotic resistance, you know, to Britain, like you're not going to just get rid of it. Like that's not going to happen in Vietnam. You're not you, you're not going to identify a list of Viet Cong, you know, capture and kill all of them, and then all of a sudden, you just have a pliant Vietnamese population that uh, is happy to you know live under whatever American puppet you you put over there like that. And they would keep putting up you know back in during the Vietnam War they kept putting up the casualty figures. Look, we just killed another you know ten thousand mm -hmm. Vietnamese. And that that would be, and and victory is you know about to turn a corner. There's light at the end of the tunnel. They kept saying, just to kill a few more. But if if the if the if the guerrilla army is an organic part of the population, yeah, then you're not going to be able to do that. And at the same time, critics of the Palestinians who say, well, there are, there are no civilians, like President Herzog has said, there are no civilians. They all support Hamas. If that's true, then how are you going to Uproot exactly. Hamas. Like yeah, you, exactly. you either believe if you believe that, then your strategy has to be to completely clear out every Palestinian, right? Or your strategy will fail. And and I think that for a lot of them, that was their strategy. But now they're running up against the the inter international uh, resistance to just clearing out all the Palestinians. Yeah, and we're talking about tens of thousands of deaths uh, based on estimates that we have right now, and still Hamas now returning to northern Gaza and uh, apparently operating uh, or, or reestablishing some of those operations mm -hmm. that existed just a few months ago. While they're still waging their military campaign. This isn't even after they've kind of backed off. Right. Well, I guess, I mean, to, to some I mean, they extent, have backed off, but yeah. they haven't 
They Life. haven't ceased fire. Yeah, right. Hey, if you liked that video, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe to Breaking Points. If you want to see the rest of CounterPoints, go to breakingpoints.com to become a premium member and get the full uncut show every morning in your inbox and on Spotify. Help us build independent news and get the full show every morning at breakingpoints.com.